my name is Cecil Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And I've been listening to uh, a bit of Big Finish. I listen to a lot of Big Finish. Less than I used to. Less than I used to. But I listen to a lot of Big Finish. Uh, 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 I listen to a lot of Big Finish Blake 7. This is not Big Finish Blake 7, but it's worth noting that Big Finish is Blake 7 is freaking awesome i mean mostly excellent in just everything they've done so it's on the strength of that that i uh i i wanted to check out their spin-offs because you know they can't make blake seven anymore because uh, well look once you lost paul darrow and gareth thomas and jacqueline pierce what are you gonna have the uh you know uh, the villa adventures and i like villa but yeah, it's not gonna. It's, it, you need that Paul Darren. You can't recast these. You can't recast them. Uh, you might be able to recast, recast Gareth Thomas at this point, but you need Paul Darrow uh, or, or and Jacqueline. Bit. I mean, Jacqueline Pierce a little bit as well. But uh, so they, they really couldn't move forward. So they came up with this quite intro, inventive idea of doing stuff from the world of Blake Seven, and. Uh, um, it's not entirely successful. I'm listening to Volume 2. This is going to be a review of Volume 2. Uh, I'm going to spoil it for you. Well, not spoil this, the story, but I'm going to spoil the review saying, meh. It's, meh. it's really missable. I, I have to tell you, if, if you love Blake 7, uh, 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 it's a must listen to. Maybe if you like really, really love Blake 7, I'm kind of glad I heard it. I'm never going to go back and listen to it again. I'll be surprised if I listen to it again. It did... Um, keep my, my my attention throughout it's, it's but it's meh it's meh i'll, I'll go i'll go into uh, uh you know greater detail about why i think so uh, uh as we go through a review that's really the point of a review you know all things considered right so uh before we get into it can you hit the like button thank you very much i'm very appreciative thank you very much uh share button that's also Pretty darn nice of you. Pretty darn nice of you. Can't argue with that. Uh, but mostly the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you like to vex uh, uh, massive multinational corporations, hit the subscribe button because YouTube don't want you to do that. They really don't. I'm very grateful for the platform they've given me, uh, but they really, really don't want you to do that. They've demonetized my channel and they take subscribers off me all the time. Uh, so hit the subscribe button if you, if you, it would be really, really helpful. And if you subscribe, do make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the notification bell because, you know, there's nothing you want to miss of the wit and wisdom of, of Celia Beck in here. I, I can understand that. Uh, uh, you want to be super nice? Go check out my Indiegogo. Go check out my Indiegogo. Uh, two awesome graphic novels. Two fantastic graphic novels. Uh, we have Biblical, Bible Stories, Ancient, Atheist, Craziness, Rationalist, Logues, 220 page pages. Ro Rationalist and Rogues, not Logues. Uh, 220 pages long. Uh, it's a uh, very, very biblically accurate, not preach at all, um, kind of a, uh, a weird, spiritual, grungy uh, story. If you like Swamp Thing, if you like Sandman, if you like Hellblazer, it's that type of thing. It's that type of thing. If I do say so myself, I wrote and uh, I wrote and drew it. So it's a little bit egotistical to put it in, put it in, you know, in the same level as all those things. But I'm a pretty egotistical guy. I think I think we can all agree to that. Uh, uh, and then we have the Imperium, a love letter to Teddy fans in the 1960s. This is 220 pages. Uh, no, no, that's not 220 pages. This is 100 pages long, which we're adding five pages in. I just got two pages of the artwork back today from Dominic Racho, the artist. I wrote this, Dominic, did the artwork. Uh, and uh, they're fantastic. And they're, and they're really, really, they're actually... A little bit better than the page, these pages, yeah, but they're really fantastic. I'm really happy with them. Uh, I will probably show uh, show people on my live stream on Tuesday. Oh, then on Thursday. Thursday, I have an interview uh, coming out in Doctor Who magazine, not me, Doctor Who magazine, uh, of uh, with uh, Jodie Whittaker and Mandip Gill. Oh, we're gonna go over that. That that's gonna be uh, I like to call it comedy gold. So yeah, go check this out. Uh, the links in the video notes. You get a bunch of extras. I've I haven't updated the page in ages. I've really got to update it. That's really bad. I got to add this on. <laughs> All these things. Uh, uh, go check out. Thank you very much. Uh, let's let's talk about um, from the worlds of Blake Seven Avalon Volume Two. So the great cover by the way. Who did the covers? Not Lee by anything. It's uh, let's have a look. Production credits, uh, cover art, to, uh, Tom Newsom. Okay, absolutely excellent cover. Um, both of them have an excellent cover. So the biggest problem with this uh, uh, is is a little bit noticeable in that it's Avalon. Avalon is the biggest problem with this. And it seems pretty clear to me now that this was uh, dreamt up in the midst of uh, when the whole Me Too thing started and everything has to be female. Because uh, uh, honestly, okay, 
I'm seeing Olivia. I'm looking at a picture of of uh, Olivia Paulet, uh, a a white blonde woman. I think college educated. I can't think of a more uh, uh, privileged group in the history of our species than white blonde, uh, attractive uh, college educated women. They are the most. Uh, uh, privileged people in the world, but they are. Uh, but in the insanity of Hollywood, where up is down, black is white. And when I say Hollywood, I mean the entertainment industry. Uh, uh, women are a, uh, a maligned underclass. <laughs> they have been they have been pushed down by the evil male patriarchy. So everything has to have a female protagonist, which is why. So big finish were like, whoa, yes, yes, we can do Avalon. Avalon's a white let's go. And the problem with Avalon is she's a, not a character. She's just a really boring cipher of a character. Um, so, you know, that actually isn't such a problem. They could have done quite a lot with that. Uh, they, what they really should have done is treated this much more as a, uh, original drama, right? An original drama set within that world with like kisses to that world, but, uh, and then build this character out of nothing. Make, make me care about Avalon. And the problem is I just don't care about her, right? They, they the character has no arc or, uh, character development over the two sets, uh, she's just a kind of like a dull cipher. So um, that being said, everybody else is much more interesting. All the original characters are much more interesting. Uh, and all the returning characters, uh, Colin Baker, freaking excellent as Baben. I'm so glad I got that set pre-booked. And also the Clone Masters, which also sounds really good. I'm really glad I got that that, that one pre-booked. He is wonderful in this. Yes, absolutely one of Stephen Grief. Also, he's always also wonderful. Also, one of the uh, the side characters they invented. Gary Russell uh, wrote for the first uh, box set, which is like this alpha grade uh, uh, statistician, somebody like record keeper who who gets sucked into Avalon's uh, 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 revolution, rebellion, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, and, and he's a really good, interesting, compelling character. Avalon not that and that's really a problem and again I think the reason they went with this one so hard is it's like oh it's a girl is it and it's just like they really missed an opportunity what the, what this really should have been is something to make me understand why she is this uh, revolutionary or you know the, the final episode they, they you see her do a bit of uh, revolutionary stuff they could, and it's got, uh, uh, oh, was it Stephen Grief as, uh, 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 what's it called again? Travis, not Tarrant, Travis. It, okay, one second. This is a major brain fart. This happens when you get older. Uh, do, 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 Stephen Grief, Travis. Oh my God, thank you. Uh, Stephen Grief as Travis, being ruthless Travis. If they made her as ruthless as Travis, uh, and like in, 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 in waging her war, again, really interesting character. Nah, they didn't do that, and and and, uh, and and these extras at the end, they say, "Oh, we really should go back. We do more of these uh, to find out more about her." Idiot! That's what you should have done from the beginning. I mean, if you want to set the world of it in the first box set and the second box set, you know, have a really good exploration of character, that you know that you know that would have worked. And yeah, it, it, if they just approach it like the uh, some of their uh, the big finish uh, uh, originals, which really didn't take off. That, that range of originals just really didn't take off at all. Um, and a girl did because I had to push it because it was girls again. And uh, I really like Big Finish. Uh, was it Nick Briggs? Uh, 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 was it Human Frontier? Everything else was a bit meh. Uh, uh, but, yeah, they could have really built up, uh, uh, in, you know, interest, yeah, an interesting characterization with, with, uh, 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 with Avalon. But they didn't. They just didn't. So that's the glaring problem going all the way through she's not bad she's just bland and uh, she bland uh, play and i think uh, olivia play does the best with it but she, she's a bland character that's really the bottom line so let's go look at the episodes in this the episodes were i think somewhat better than the first box set right so um uh through the galaxy people fighting blah 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 Baber, uh, Baben's Bounty uh, by Neil uh, uh, Bushnell. I think he's done other B, uh, Blake Seven. Uh, he was this. He he was pretty good. Let's have a look. Here, one second. We'll go. Uh, Neil Bushnell. Let's see what else he's done. Uh, not much. Okay, fine. Not much. I think I've heard his name before. Uh, okay. Uh, and no, let's have a quick look at uh, Christopher Cooper. I think he's done stuff as well. Uh, Christopher Cooper. Bit more of a background. Bit more of a background. Okay, fine. 
Because again, all these stories were, I would say, um, there was a stronger collection of stories than, than the first box set. So a sacred stone may inspire a revolution on a recently subjugated planet if Avalon can only uh, retrieve it from a high security prison. She enlists the help of uh, Vankberg. Uh, Van Gogh books only escaping the madman at the top of the Federation most wanted list, Baben. Yeah, so it's a, it, it, it's very Blake Seventy. This one, this story, I think, is is one of the most Blake Seventy. Uh, it's because Blake Seventy, you have these weird religious people in it for some reason. Out know In fact, in Baben's episode, you had those that weird religious group with the door, and it turned out that the villa had to open. It turned out it was taken to another universe, and there was like Baben had this. Uh, 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 attractive hot space pirate who took a shine to Villa in that episode, right? And, uh, and just, Villa, do you want to come with me through this magic door and live a life of uh, uh, you know one you know wonderful luxury and have sex with me a lot? And Villa's like, no, I'll stay. I'll, I'll stay on the Liberator. Now I'm very glad he did. I like Villa, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't. Villa would have been through that door in a shot. I would have. Th- I, you know, I would have thought. But anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's got one of these like religiously groups in. Um, weekly is here. I keep saying David. The weekly is Avalon. Avalon turns up uh, and she's uh, trying to inspire a revolution. And again, what I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't keep asking is what? Why? Like what? I don't know anything about it. why. Um, so they they got to steal this uh, this religious artifact, uh, and they enlist uh, 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 Colin Baker's babe to do it. Again, who is fantastic? He is. He is, knocks it out the park. And I would say probably one of the best reasons to buy this set. I get, it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's like, I, I sometimes listen to the thing and go, oh, that was awful. No, it's not bad. And I like listening to Colin Baker. I like listening to Steve, Steve, Stephen Griffin. I like being in that world. I do find it interesting. Uh, but it's just, <laughs> it's missing something. Uh, so, yeah, so I would say that that's probably the one of the best stories on, on, uh, on the set. The second one, Mercenary. Another interesting one. It's where uh, uh, funding a crusade isn't easy, and one of Avalon's debts has just come due. She and Madison. I can't remember if Madison was in the first episode. So Madison again is that alpha grade uh, character in who's kind of like who uh, kind of like a savant to, in 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 a certain you know a cert, cert, in certain aspects. He should have been aborted before he was born, and his parents uh, uh, you know. Um, had him so that yeah so that that was interesting and that that put him outside the whole federation thing that was that was a really strong so i think that's probably the strongest story of of all the six that we've seen um so uh uh, so basically what happens is uh, she's trying to borrow weapons from an arms dealer and again feels very blake 70 it feels it, it feels very much in that world and she gets recruited in to do a mercenary job uh, that brings back in Dev Tarrant. Uh, yeah, Dev Tarrant, the guy who betrayed Blake in the way back. Though they brought Tarrant back a few times in the Blake's everything, and they've uh, they have established that he is the third uh, brother or the third of the Tarrant brothers. We got Dev, you have Dell, and we have which, whoever it was that was killed in that season three episode, uh, the showdown one, uh, whether the 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 gunslinger one. Um. So uh, and so you got this like real seething hatred between uh what's the name Madison and uh, uh to, you know towards Tarrant. Tarrant is obviously very uh uh jupilitous. Is that a jupilitous? Jupilitous. He's bit bit of a naughty boy. Bit of a liar. Okay. Bit of a liar. He, you you can't really trust him. Everyone's got their own agendas going on. Uh. Again, very Blake Seventy. That that all that stuff really works well. Uh, not bad episode. It's got Avalon in it, and the third one, Heart of Ice, is a bit fan wankery. Okay, it, it it basically works as a prequel to the Project Avalon episode uh, in was it season two? I think yeah. Um, uh, what uh, what is the Federation doing on a frozen uh, frozen backwater world? Avalon is determined to uncover the secret buried on uh, Cryonax's mines. Uh, by the time she realizes that Travis is setting a trap, she might be too late. So again, so we start off. Uh, uh, she has blackmailed a Federation guard of uh, this Federation officer to get passage on a ship uh, to this planet. Uh, and that's really good because again, you see the darker side of Avalon. And she actually has a bit of character then. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, the the whole world building is pretty good. I, I it was an well again we we see the world in 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 uh, uh, Project Avalon. 
uh, Travis has this uh, plan to catch Blake, and he ends up attracting Avalon by mistake, and, and he's be he's a bit miffed by it. And there's quite a good, it's been quite a good like high action sequence uh, uh, in the second in the in the final third uh, when. Um, Avalon joins up with like the the enslaved uh, uh, insurgency, the tiny insurgency uh, on the planet, and helps them develop a uh, uh, rebel army and attack the Federation. Um, not bad, yeah. So there's lots of like that that, that cool uh, uh, Federation blast, uh, pow, pow sounds going on for it. Uh, and again, it dovetails nicely into Project Avalon. This is an interesting six episodes, uh, one uh, volume one and two entirely missable right you can if you're a blake seven fan you can miss it and not feel like you've missed anything in blake seven but it's it, i enjoyed hearing um colin baker stephen griff is 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 always a delight it's nice be, be, being in the world it, it again it's not essential listening it's easy listening. That's why I would describe it. It's Blake Seven easy listening. Right? So if if that's enough to make make you uh, how much is this? 16, 17 bucks. Uh, yeah, pony up seventeen bucks. Uh, then well, then go for it. Absolutely go for it. Don't bother get, getting the physical ones. Just get the digital. I like why why spend the extra? Was it ten pounds or whatever it is? Because it's really not worth it. It's really not worth it. Next one, uh, I'm quite, I'm much more excited about the uh, 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 the Clone Masters. Why? It doesn't have Avalon in it. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Who knows? Or dares to dream. So there you go. Um, I hope that 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 guides you in if, if, if it's something that you're gonna want you know, want to listen to or not. Uh, uh, I'm not sorry I bought it. I, I which I have been about a bunch of uh, big finish releases over last year. Uh, I, but I'm not I, again. I can't imagine myself going back and listening to it in the near future. I really can't or, or ever or ever. Uh, but again, it's kind of fun. The music is a bit better in this one. Uh, the eight is set. The eight is style setting um not bad the theme tune still horrible theme tune still remains absolutely uh, absolutely horrible i'll be intrigued to see if they do do a uh if they release a third volume uh, yeah if i think the cells they got on these were not based on their quality but based on the quality of the big fit of the blake seven stuff big finish have already done um so i don't know would i get a third one they're probably gonna have the yeah to sell these things, just like these two sets, they're gonna have to put in more bells and whistles to attract people, like Babe, like Babe, and like uh, like Jenna, like uh, uh, um, Travis. You know, they're gonna have to put in bling. They're gonna have to put in, which is what they're doing in everything now to attract people to buy it because they've really big finish have really lost uh, their um, their good reputation they spent twenty years building up over the past year. They've really lost it, which is tragic, absolutely tragic. Uh, but never mind, never mind. So there you go, uh, Avalon. Go check it out. Go check it out. Oh yeah, the only other thing to see, uh, uh, recommend it is there is a nice bit when uh, Travis meets the uh, the president, and you see their interaction. You never saw the president on the TV series. Uh, this is a complete uh, big finish uh, uh, edition, which works perfectly. It works absolutely perfectly. So there you go. My name is Peter Beck, and you are back from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell, ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.